I've bought many development kits for microprocessor boards over the years and generally they arrive like this. There you go. Get on with it. Not so this time. What I have here is a new device, something like a newer version of the Arduino, maybe competition for the Raspberry Pi. It's a complete development environment. The programming language is called Swift. The I.O., the processor board, etc. is called Swift I.O. And the IDE, Integrated Development Environment, is called Mad Machine. Let's take a look. A handy cable for connecting. A SD card. A nice piece of foam. Written instructions, would you believe? So no need to go and download some flaky PDF. It's a, a nice glossy brochure there. And we can see what level of attention to detail has been given to this kit. High quality components you can see off the bat. And everything has its own little compartment. And here we have the main processor board. And that looks very neat indeed. One thing I notice from the get-go is this that looks strangely Arduino-like. In fact, it's an Arduino shield for the Swift I.O. So clearly that's going to sit on the bottom of there. And we'll take a look at how all of this gets put together. Firstly, though, let's go through the features and functions of the Swift I.O. board itself. Taking a close look then at the Swift I.O. main processor board, the processor itself here is an IMX RT1052 crossover processor with an ARM Cortex M7 core running at some 600 megahertz. It's not really fair to compare this board against the aging Arduino Uno, which uh, just has the Atmega 328P running at 16 megahertz. We have an SD card slot which will support high capacity cards. We have two micro USBs, one for downloading the bin files to the board itself and one available as a UART. The array of headers here supports 46 GPIO pins against the Arduino's 14. There's an onboard color RGB LED. We have 12 12-bit analog to digital converter pins against the Arduino 6, in addition to which it has four onboard UARTs, two CAN ports, two I2Cs and two SPI buses. Also included are a total of 14 PWM capable pins against the Arduino 6. So clearly it's a, a much more advanced board and much more capable. Let's now then look at installing the Mad Machine IDE and get some code on this board. Navigate to madmachine.io stroke downloads and you can make your selection. The file cannot be checked for viruses as it is too big but go ahead and download it anyway. Having then downloaded the file let's run it. Microsoft will flag it as a potential virus, but clearly it is not, so go ahead. Finish and launch. Let's go with create a new project. Test. What I'm interested in first is just connecting the board up and see if the IDE recognises it. Before connecting the board, make sure that you insert the SD card. The board will not be recognised if you don't do that. That's not made clear in the instructions. With the supplied USB cable then, let's plug her in. We get a red flashing light. We press the download button. It's now being recognised by the system. And here in the interface we've got this very small little icon which is in fact the, the SWIFT which indicates to us that the board is connected. Let's find an example to load then. 
we go to the Maker Kit and Mission 1, the Blink. At the top of what I guess we can still call the sketch is a description of what it does, just flashes the onboard LED on and off. Below the description then the code itself, which is very similar to what we would expect in, a, in an Arduino sketch. The commands are very slightly different, but we can make sense of it. So it sets the LED first to blue and then flashes it on and off for a second. So LED off, LED on. Let's compile that and upload it to the board now then. We get some details then of the sketch and it downloads it to the board. And we see the blue flashing LED. Let's experiment now and change the LED to red. And now, not surprisingly, we have a flashing red LED. That then was a very brief introduction to this new technology. I think you'll agree that the SwiftIO board itself, with its much faster processor and other capabilities, is going to be very interesting to work with and see how it develops. It's still in its early days. In the little box there uh, is also provided a detailed view of the I.O. pins and the pins are also designated clearly on the edge connectors there as well. A very useful feature. That concludes the video then. In future videos we'll be going through the other components that have been supplied in the kit and build upon our simple example into more complex projects.